lifted up out of the uh, shuttle's payload bay like you're seeing here in this animation. It will then be handed over to the station's robotic arm. On board the station will be Nicole Stott and STS-129 pilot Barry Wilmore. They will be at the uh, station's robotic console. They will take over this ELC-1, take a handoff from the shuttle's robotic arm. And after that handoff has taken place, the uh, station's robotic arm will move this ELC-1, which may weighs more than 13,000 pounds, out to the port truss, which is the left-hand part of the station, and we'll begin the process of installing it. These ELCs are absolutely huge. They carry very large spare parts on board them that uh, might be needed in the future for the station. The first piece of equipment we're going to zoom in here is going to be a control moment gyro. We use these to provide non-propulsive attitude control for the space station. We use four of them. Uh, this will be a spare. You'll see another spare on ELC-2. Next is the battery charge discharge unit. This box is responsible for controlling the charge and discharge of the batteries that are part of ISS's photovoltaic power system. Next is the plasma contactor unit. The job of this box is to essentially ground ISS's structure to the space environment to prevent any arcing from the plasma environment into the station's electrical system. Latching end defector, this is essentially the hand at the end of the station's robotic arm. On the underside of the ELC, these three ORUs work together. They're all part of the external, control, uh, external thermal control system. We have the nitrogen tank assembly, pump module, and ammonia tank assembly. We use ammonia as the heat rejection fluid in the external thermal control system. It's stored in the ammonia tank assembly. The nitrogen tank assembly pressurizes the bellows in the ammonia tank assembly, and then the pump module pumps the liquid ammonia through the lines to collect the heat and then reject it out into the radiators.